Hi and welcome back to a new video. About two months ago I was talking to my overclocking buddy Splave from the US and he was asking me about AMD EPIC 4124P and if I would know that CPU and also know that it has an open multiplier. Both I didn't know before. I was also thinking of this like huge threadripper sized AMD EPIC like SP5 socket CPU but it's actually this. And this AMD EPIC 4124P is also the smallest CPU for socket AM5 because it only comes with four cores. Whereas all the common Ryzen 7000, Ryzen 9000 CPUs, they're starting from six cores. With about 160 euro here in Germany, it's not even cheap. If you, for example, compare it to the 7500F, which costs 10 euro less, but has two more cores. Or for example, the 7600X, which we will compare it to in today's video, costs 200 euro, again, has two more cores, also higher clock. So from all that, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to use this CPU, especially in gaming. At least that's my assumption. The question will be if we can even get it started, because if you just take a look at the official CPU support lists in the motherboard guides, this CPU is pretty much listed nowhere. Why is the AMD EPIC 4124P even interesting? I'm still asking myself the same question. Uh, so why would you even use it for? I know that the overclocking guys on HWBot, they always try to find a new niche to find a CPU or like a graphics card that can give them better points in specific categories because they are divided by core count. And because this is an overclockable, at least it seems like it, four core pretty recent CPU, it performs pretty well, outperforms previous gens. So that, that's why this CPU holds multiple records, for example, the HWBOT X265 benchmark, and yeah, with an overclock to like 6.7 gigahertz with liquid nitrogen. But for gaming, not quite sure, we will find out. You surely saw the Seasonic MacFlow fans in one of my videos before. Seasonic also offers them in an ARGB version. With a different fan blade design, RGB inside the frame and also subtle RGB in the center, these fans focus on both design and performance. The MacFlow ARGB are also daisy chainable and can easily be expanded and connected by the integrated magnets that couple the fans without additional clips or tools. Seasonic also includes a small RGB controller if you want to avoid annoying software issues. Find out more in the link below. Just from the outer appearance, this is pretty much identical to previously existing AMD Ryzen CPUs. I just noticed that the PCB color is a little bit different. That might be because of the place where it's made. If we pay to attention to what's written on the IHS, it says made in China, which is kind of interesting because previously, like this Ryzen 7000, it says made in Malaysia, but also diffused in Taiwan because the chips came from TSMC from Taiwan. Then the more recent Ryzen 9000 only says made in Malaysia. I think AMD changed that earlier this year that they are no longer listing this diffused in Taiwan thing, which is basically the chips being made in Taiwan. And I mean, our channel is not really politics, so I don't really want to yeah, comment more on that. But unfortunately, it doesn't give you as much information right now when it only says made in China. But I would say it's pretty safe to say that it's still probably made by TSMC in Taiwan, then maybe shipped to China for the packaging onto the PCB. Apart from that, it is just a Zen 4 based CPU. That means apart from Epic being written on the IHS, it's a Ryzen 7000 CPU. Probably the same chiplets on there. And I'm still asking myself why you would even buy this. And that's not even talking about the four cores in general, but just this being an Epic, you know? Like Ryzen 7000 also supports ECC if your mainboard supports it. Not really sure why you would buy this at all. And now I just have to find out if it boots on one of my motherboards because if you check the official CPU support list, I checked it for my Gigabyte B650E Aros Master, there it wasn't listed. And also on this X870E Hero was also not listed on there. So we just put it in the socket and see what happens. We will first test it without VGA just to see what happens. Yeah, that looks good. Like. No zero zero. If it was a problem, it would just be zero zero. But now fifteen, it's like part of memory detection, so that should be fine. Boot was fine, and I already also loaded Expo with a six thousand C thirty. No problem at all for our little four core epic. I definitely forgot how long it takes to run Cinebench R twenty three with only four cores. It's running with C five thousand one hundred and fifty megahertz across all of the cores. See a CPU package power of about. 85 watt under load. I'm just going to rerun this so we can see the load state. 
And the temperatures I saw for the first run that I used for the German take, it's between like 70 and 75 degrees Celsius, which I thought would be lower. Like this is running with a 360 AIO under load and it's only four cores. The CPU is listed with 65 watt TDP according to AMD, it's still pulling 85 watts. So first look doesn't seem to be that efficient under load. We will look at some stock benchmarks, also gaming benchmarks. First Cinebench R23, which we already saw, but I just performed clean runs again, also with everything like hardware info disabled. I scored 9,711 points at 87 watt power consumption. Especially if we compare this with a higher core count, Ryzen 7600X, which scores 1,500 points at 120 watt or load. Yeah, the Epic with four cores is not really that efficient, like especially if you compare it with like a six core CPU. In Assassin's Creed Mirage in 1080p resolution with an RTX 4090 to 4124p isn't consuming a lot of power, just 60 watt under load. But now if we look at the 7600X that is 35% faster than the 4124p, you can definitely feel the two missing cores. In Valorant and 4K resolution, the 4124P is the CPU with the lowest power consumption I have tested in a very long time. However, it's also the slowest. With only 528 FPS on average, the Epic is only half as fast as the 7600X. So that is just incredibly CPU bottlenecked. However, there are also other games such as Remnant 2, which are still playable with only four cores if you compare it to the 7600X. The performance difference is only about 10%. Still overall, I would say we all agree that four cores are just bottlenecking any recent GPU and we just won't do any more gaming benchmark at this point. Even though I don't have much hope that we can make up the missing two cores with additional frequency, I still will try to delete the CPU, mount a custom water block to see if we can just push the CPU very high to yeah, gain a little bit extra frequency and also performance and see how much this will help. Direct comparison to a 7700X on the left. They're pretty close to each other. There's only small differences. Like if you pay attention to the glue, it's like this line shape and then just 90 degrees. Whereas on the 7700X, it's just round dots of glue. Talking about glue on the Epic CPU, all the yeah, empty pads are with some sort of glue. And on the 7700X on the left, they are empty, but that's basically it. Apart from the PCB color that is much more greenish on the Epic CPU, yeah, it just shows that they must be assembled somewhere else, different PCB supplier. Not sure why they even make them different. CPU is clean, now I just have to apply liquid metal. I'm going to use our new Micro Pro, which I didn't show so far. And it's basically the same as the previous one when it comes to the bottom structure, just the internal cooling structure itself changed. It's a hybrid structure, we call it, because it has different fin layouts, much denser fin structure for the CCD area and then less dense for the IO die. And then, yeah, will give you much better performance, much better thermals than the previous one. First, quick check if everything is alive and works. Looks good from what I can see. I'm just checking the stock condition first. CPU is still running 5.150 across all the four cores. Temperature dropped a lot as expected. It's again like 20 degrees Celsius, roughly lower. And the CPU package power also dropped a little bit because of the lower temperature, dropped by five to six watt on average, I would say. Half an hour and a lot of voltage later, you can see we gained 500 megahertz. 5650 it's going to be. I had to increase V-Core quite a bit, so it's 1.45 volt under load. 
Not sure if that's something I would run daily, but for this kind of test, it should be fine. So you can see 5,650. The temperature is pretty cool though, like literally. It's the same region that we saw stock with the 360 AIO. And the CPU package power draw was currently at about 100 to 105. So it increased by about 20 watts on the load. And there you can see what kind of big difference custom water cooling makes versus just a normal closed loop liquid cooler. Now just rerunning without hardware info in the background and we are reaching 10,800 points. I'm also running a Cinebench R23 single threaded because I think here the increased clock could help quite a bit. And we are reaching 2,023 points. That is quite a bit. That is above a 7950X. So at least in single threaded performance, this definitely helps a lot. I'm going to repeat my gaming benchmarks in a bit. I just wanted to show you how this CPU performs with 5650 or how it behaves under load in a gaming scenario. But you can still see that the GPU is yeah, pretty much bored. It's somewhere between 50 and like 65% load, which is a clear indication that this scenario is still heavily CPU bottlenecked, even though we pushed the CPU quite a bit. And with 5650 megahertz on the CPU and this high voltage, it's still running fairly cool because of the lower load. So we can see like, I don't know, 44, 45 degrees Celsius. So I think even with this very high overclock, the CPU would survive quite a bit, at least in the gaming scenario. In Cinebench, we increased 10% clock and gained 11% performance, but also gained 20% in power consumption. So in that scenario, the four core CPU, yeah, it's still very slow. In Remnant 2, overclocking helps quite a bit. The 4124P benefits quite a bit due to the high single core performance and now 66 FPS in 1% low, which even beats the 7600X. But in the average FPS, the 7600X is still faster. We see the same kind of linear increase in performance to the clock as we saw in Cinebench in Assassin's Creed Mirage. So now 1% low, 69 FPS, but that is still far behind the 6 core 7600X. It is a lot worse though in Valorant. So the CPU cannot really benefit here from the additional 10% performance increase or clock increase because in this gaming scenario, it can only increase the performance by four to 5%. It's definitely lacking cores here. In the end, this just all confirmed what we already knew. Four cores these days for a gaming system is just not enough. So yeah, if you're planning to get any kind of upgrades, well, it also shows you that upgrading from a four core makes sense and at least get six cores if your budget allows it also get eight cores. What I wouldn't get is this uh, four core China AMD Epic. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not even sure still why it exists. Maybe they had some four cores laying around or like there's a lot of defective stuff on, on there and only four cores were still working. Apart from that, not really sure yeah, what the point of this CPU is. I hope you still enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye bye.